Hello! There's been quite a few things have arrived in the post recently which I haven't got around to looking at yet so I thought I'd try and do a bit of a mailbag video since that seems quite a popular thing. So this is all the stuff that came and I'll go through it a bit at a time. I'll put links in the description down below to each of the items and uh, have some more text description about them. These are a couple of Pentel Orens propelling pencils. Those of you who follow me for a while will probably know that I make metal bodied mechanical pencils and I use the tips and mechanisms of these in some of my designs. They're rather unique in that they See if I can zoom in. They have a retractable lead sleeve which supports the lead as it wears down. You can see the lead projecting out there. I'll try and demonstrate. So normally you would extend it that far and then as the lead wears down, see there, the sleeve moves back keeping it supported. This is usually only important for the smaller sizes of lead like 0.2 and 0.3. Uh, both of these are 0.5. Contrast that with a, uh, this is a normal Pentel P205, which has a fixed lead sleeve that doesn't retract. These are in some ways better because the whole tip is rigid. The retractable sleeve of the Orens does introduce a little bit of wiggle in the tip, but it's a matter of preference. So both of these are 0.5 millimeters. So they'll go into uh, metal pencils at some point. So it's Pentel Orens, not the Nero. The Orens Nero is a completely different style of pencil and the code's PP505. Got a bunch of Pilot G2 propelling gel ink clicky pens. The G2 is probably the most one of the most popular gel ink pens around. I really like them. Uh, this is the blue-black colour and the 0.7mm tip size. I find the 0.5 is a little bit on the small side. Um, if you are getting the refills, that's the things there, and the refills have two codes on them, that and that, for some reason, just to make things complicated. Some assorted anti-static bags. I've got both the pink poly, which are ESD dissipative, and the metalised plastic mylar type, which are actual shielding. Uh, the smallest grip seal bags you can find are these 3 inch by 5 inch. And what else have I got? These ones right. Oh, yeah, these are a grip seal as well, but in the, the tight side to try and open. But Good enough for small components. Uh, what was in? Slightly larger sizes. And a bunch of ah, non grip seal bags for heat sealing. I actually ordered these first thinking that they were a grip seal and they of course weren't. So always handy for storing components in, make sure they don't get zapped by static. I prefer the, the pink poly ones even though they're technically not as good as the metalized foil ones because they roll up easier for storing in uh, component drawers and the like. I'm currently building a belt grinder and I'm going to use a glass ceramic platen on it so I'm going to try using some of this double-sided tape to attach it. Uh, very high bond, VHB 3M tape, it's supposed to be excellent. There are many different uh, models of tape out there, I just got this one from Amazon, it sounded pretty good. So, I haven't actually tried it yet, have a little, little shifty at it. What have I got?
Hmm, looks nice. So it's got quite a thick, focus in on that. It's got a one millimeter thick foam core and certainly feels sticky. So we'll give that a shot, see if it works out. I'm reasonably confident this is genuine tape. There's many listings on Amazon that say 3M, but it's clearly not a, an actual 3M product. So we'll stick with the, the genuine stuff. I do a lot of titanium drilling for my pencil bodies and I've always been trying to find a good make of or model of drill that work with titanium. So I was in touch with Dormer a couple of months ago, who I usually get drills from, and they suggested the A900 series. Uh, I haven't tried this yet, but it uh, looks apart. High helix angle, split point. So it's itches a C. A900, 5.9 millimetres. Uh, so hopefully that will improve things. Should do, it cost about £18 for one drill, so I'm hoping that uh, I'll be impressed by it. I've recently been experimenting with wire crimping for attaching connections instead of the usual soldering jobs that I do. And uh, these are some, they're called closed end crimp connectors or wire caps come in three different sizes, that's the specs there and they're used for joining wires together when you have several of them so give you a little demo here one important point, these are zoom in a little here so they have a focus nylon sleeve and there's a little aluminium tube inside that gets crimped down on to the wires. These are aluminium which I'm a little bit dubious about for long-term reliability. Uh, better quality ones are tinned copper. So let's have a little demonstration here. My Nipex tools of course. <laughs> uh, I've got a Nipex 97-22-240 crimper stripper. Just got this recently, really happy with it. And a Nipex what does that say? 1262-180 automatic wire stripper. I've had this for about five years now and I absolutely love it. So let's see, we're all in focus here. So stripper wires, these are about half a millimeter square wires. And we'll try and twist I hope all this is in focus, otherwise you're not going to see very much. Twist all them together. I think that's going out of focus. I'll do it down here. It's smaller, but at least it's in focus. So, wires twisted together nicely. And slide the cap over. Like so. And then crimp them with, I'm using the smallest of these, placing it over the middle of the aluminium tube, and squeeze. I'm not entirely sure how hard you should squeeze these, but I just give it full, full welly, and there is a nice crimp. Insulation goes up inside the housing. And that's never gonna, never gonna come off. So, very useful addition to the toolkit. Um, I get gradually getting the hang of wire crimping lately. Uh, I had to do a bit of quite a lot of mains wiring on a control panel, and it really helped speed things up. Various syringe-related things here. I've got some one milliliter. Narrow syringes, these are lure slip and uh, they look like that on out of the packet. Uh, some they're called syringe couplers, syringe connectors. They basically have a lure connection at both ends for joining two syringes together. 
You can use that for transferring material between syringes. I'll show you that in a minute. And a whole bunch of syringe caps, which are just blind closed caps to stop syringes drying out. So the reason I got them, I use solder paste quite a lot. This is uh, silver solder paste and it normally comes in a 5cc, 5ml syringe. A couple of problems, it does get a little bit hard to push out as it ages and I also suspect that repeated pushing tends to squeeze out the liquid component more than the solder paste and it makes it stiffer over time. It's just a feeling I have. So I want to transfer some into the narrow syringes and use them. So let's take off the... This is going out of focus. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, take off the existing tip there. We'll put on the coupler, focus, there, just fits on like a normal syringe tip, and I'll squeeze some of the paste through just to take up the airspace, mm, that should do, and then simply shove on the other syringe, reasonably tight. So I'm going to squeeze this one in and you should see the other one fill up with the solder paste. Like that. A little bit of air trapped but no big deal. So I'll put that much in, see? Take it off. So, a plastic nozzle. Can I stick that on? And I can easily dispense solder paste at the end of that. That's just fingertip pressure. It's easily sufficient. So that'll make it a lot nicer to use and it'll save the bulk of it from going bad. Then I take one of the little blanking caps. There's a little bit left in there but not too much. One of the blanking caps and stick it on to keep it protected. So syringes are very useful for solder paste uh, stuff like that. You can also get many other fittings with the same lure style connector. Uh, you can get valves, Y connections, hose fittings, hose barbs, you name it. This is a little too big to fit on screen. These are one meter long rods of red, green and blue Delrin, also known as Acetal. Uh, they're one inch diameter. Normally you can only get black and white Acetal, but I saw a guy on eBay had these from a factory closing down sale, so I grabbed them. Um, no real uses in mind, just nice colours. Delrin machines beautifully on the lathe, so it's, it's very easy material to turn. So they'll come in handy, I'm sure, for something decorative. And just as a bonus, that little knife you saw me use earlier, it's off of AliExpress for all of, I think, £30. Uh, all titanium, and it holds a standard craft or scalpel blade, number 24 size. This slips on, like that. Uh, it locks locks open, uh, ball bearing joints, feels very well made and it flicks open with a nice, a nice click. Rather remarkable that uh, you can get something like this so cheaply, rather depressing as well I guess, but uh, it's a handy little, handy little knife. Uh, well, that was that. Hope you found it vaguely interesting, and uh, I probably droned on far too long, but well, that's my first attempt at this, so uh, we'll see how it goes in the future. Thanks for watching.